Okay, now we have sound, I think. So let me just check if you can hear me. Let me know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm just going to keep on singing. Can you hear me? I think it's working. Because we're on the video capture now instead of the microphone. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Ready to rock. Here we go. So painting, painting. Welcome to painting. All you wonderful people. So I'm just going to check the Ashley. So nice to see you and Kayla and Lenore, I think is there too. So I'm just checking the three cameras and then we're off and running. So I've got the infinity camera, which is just, you know, what we see on the screen. And then I've got the demonstration camera, which is right in front of me. And that is me and Jerome. Hello. You're not in painting, dude. Your thing is later. But um, okay, so here we go. Couple announcements. So I already sent this out, but I'm just gonna. Uh oh, we're late. Um, I'm just gonna repeat the idea. Uh, there is a new quizzy format. The new quizzy format. Um, I think I said you got one shot in it. I think I set it for two. Um, <laughs> all right, Jerome. We'll see it. Like I don't know, ten. Um, but nice to see you. So. Uh, the new quizzy format, you get two shots at it, all the answers. I'm going to give you all the answers right now. If you miss this, you've got to go. Uh, it will be on the YouTube site within about six hours, depending on YouTube. Um, and that is that idea. I set aside an hour uh, for just for painting between 9 and 10. If you have any questions, uh, you can either live chat there or you can email and I will check my email every once in a while just to make sure I'm answering all the questions. And once I've done the whole demonstration, if uh, there's no questions, no comments, then I'm going to shut down the live stream for that day. School calendar. So our next, the other way that this works is whatever I'm presenting today is the information for next week. Okay, so I'm going to talk about pop art today. Right now we're working on the creative color wheel with the animal. Okay, if you're not sure about that, watch last, almost two weeks ago because of the uh, loss of that Wednesday. Um, watch the last live cast and that does the whole demonstration on the creative color wheel and the animal. So this week we're doing the pop art, which is next week. So I'm just kind of a week ahead so especially for remote students that kind of they're working on things as you're going along so go remote students go hybrid students go us all right we don't need that all right pop art pop art pop art so i'm going to jump onto the website so i'm switching cameras and it's going to go to this so uh there is our website okay the main site and we're on the live stream right now and go figure you already know that and uh, here's painting we're gonna click on painting and uh, we have you know it's a different schedule from 200 minutes a week now we're down to like 60 minutes of instruction a week so um, these you know the weeks we're kind of sticking to the weeks all right here's week five six all right and there we're doing the creative color wheel now technically we're kind of on week seven or kind of six and a half so we're about in the right spot sort of okay so this whole week we're finishing up the uh, creative color wheel next week we start into pop art and here we go so here are some answers to that quizzy right off the bat um, pop art often takes imagery that currently is used in advertisement well currently um, isn't quite correct uh, these are definitions I pulled from the internet um, currently it's not so current. Uh, the pop art really took place 
it started in the 50s, but it was mostly well known for the 1960s. So if there was a question on a quizzy and it said what time period, I would put 1960s somewhere in there. Uh, it does have to do with advertising or you know product product labeling, logos, uh, logos that we might think of every day nowadays would be you know the Amazon logo or the McDonald's logo or uh, Nike, Adidas, Coca-Cola, all those logos kind of stand out to us. Well, that, back in the 1960s, one of the logos that really stood out that everybody would recognize, even if you couldn't read the language, the the kind of the iconic looking advertisement logo on the front um, spoke to uh, Campbell's Soup. Okay, So this first picture right here, if you were taking a quizzy, uh, you might have to identify Andy Warhol, and there's the painting. And he did a whole series of these, and these are actually less paintings, and they were more prints, um, kind of like a printing press. So you could mass produce artwork. Uh, so it kind of, it was the idea that it took away from this, this past, the past idea of what art was, where it was very exclusive to a group of people, um, royalty or the rich and you know it was all stuck away in a museum and there was only one of them and now Andy Warhol came along and he started mass producing prints um, of everyday objects for the, the common person so Andy Warhol soup cans uh, if you ever get a chance to get up to the Albright Knox uh, they have uh, one of the soup can paintings up there in the modern art collection Next one over that we're going to talk about is Roy Lichtenstein. Um, up until this point, comic books really for, were considered for children. And he took it from the, you know, the comic book pages uh, of children into the museum. So he took these panels of artwork and made them into paintings. And if you zoomed way in on this, it's not... I'll put an image later today. Let me make a note of that. It's actually the image is made up of dots, okay? Just like um, uh, I'm just writing something real quick. Dots detail website. I will add that. It's a good idea. But when comics were printed in the newspaper, it's not a solid color like it is today. Uh, it was little dots making up the groupings of color. So I will put on there later today how he painted each dot in an area to, to fill that color. Uh, so that's Roy Lichtenstein, known for the comics of pop art. Scrolling on down, quite a bit later, really out of the 60s, to be honest with you, and into the 70s, uh, early 80s, uh, Keith Haring kind of just caught on to the maybe the end of the pop art uh, scene, and he was working in the New York subways uh, as a graffiti artist. So this was a style of art, really, it was early on, 1970s, where it started catching on, where this was common everyday art in the subway, on the streets, and then people started uh, recognizing it as everyday art, everyday people, and it went from subways into museums. And he worked with these very uh, simple, abstracted human forms, uh, bright colors, and um, but just at the tail end of the pop art scene. Uh, this was kind of a change over to what you almost might call the street art scene. So uh, this is Keith Haring. Uh, Klaus Oldenburg, huge sculptures of everyday items. He did sculptures of hamburgers and french fries. Uh, sometimes they were almost pillows uh, stuffed and sewn together to m create the illusion of these huge boxes of french fries. And in this case, uh, a giant sculpture of a spoon in a cherry. Okay, And I think it has a fountain out of the top of it. I'm pretty sure it does. But Klaus Oldenburg, uh, a sculptural artist in the pop art scene. So we have uh, a number of different mediums. We have Andy Warhol with his uh, prints, Roy Lichtenstein with his paintings, 
Keith Haring with his, uh, a lot of it was chalk or spray paint. I don't know how much spray paint he used, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, Keith Haring with the street art and Klaus Oldenburg with the sculpture. So those are all absolutely guaranteed to be on the quiz. All right, let me jump back to the other screen so that I can see if anybody's talking here. Uh, rah, rah, there we go. And over to this one. And uh, hello, Patricia. Okay, so um, jumping back in here, switching cameras, good. All right, other things that are on the quiz E. Um, I said 1960s, and let me get to the, the assignment, and then we'll talk about the color uh, ideas. So um, how do I want to do this? Yeah, let's go back to the website. Okay, so how are we doing uh, pop art? So one thing we're going to do, this is, you know, we're getting towards Halloween if you celebrate Halloween. And the beauty of Halloween, other than becoming something that you, you know, you can only become with a costume or in your dreams, uh, is candy. Candy is, you know, sweet. And uh, what I'm going to have you do is pick out your favorite candy. And um, then we're going to photograph it up close, like super close. And I'll give you an example down below here that I just did in class. So there's a Twix bar, and I zoomed in and shot a picture. And um, anybody can do this next part, whether you have a iPhone or an Android phone. And there's a lot of different apps out there. These are just two that I found yesterday. And if I suggest an app, I really don't want you to buy anything. They should be free. So I zoom way in there. You can kind of see where I have it set. It's free. Um, so if you if you open up, you know, pop art style on the Android and it's not free or it asks you to pay for other filters or, um, you know, offers in-app purchases, that kind of thing, don't pay for anything. This was just you know, for class to, to kind of simplify the idea. So pop art style is available for the Android and abstract U pop art effects and try some others out, but these are just ones that I found real quick. So abstract U, what I did is I just shot a picture of the Twix bar and I played around with their filters and their color combinations to get something like this. Okay. It just simplifies it, knocks out some of the shadows, and it makes it into these super crazy colors we're going to talk about in just a second. Um, common, okay, up here real quick. Pop art has to do with commonplace objects like comic strips, soup cans, road signs, hamburgers were used as subject matter and were often physically incorporated into the work. So I think that's another one of the, the quizzes. So, um, so zoom in on the candy package. Uh, we'll get to the color relationship in a minute. You're going to limit it to three colors. Uh, these are links to find pop art and pop art artists. And here's some examples of zooming way in on the candy. All right, we're going to switch cameras. I'm going to show you the next part. No, 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 no. Camera number three. Okay, so uh, there's a couple ways to do this. You can work from your phone. Okay, especially uh, folks at home, uh, you can work from your phone, or if you have access to a printer, you can print it out. Uh, I printed the Twix bar image really big. Uh, if you need help uh, in the gridding idea, uh, I will jump back to the gridding demonstration in just a moment. But uh, really big. And then we're going to have this canvas paper. i got to move my coffee. All right, we can kind of see it. And an easy way to grid from just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper is fold it once, fold it twice, why not, fold it three times. And when I open this back up, it naturally grids it. Now, we're going to get into some serious gridding next. Yes, the next painting is a, a portraiture. Kayla, you're gonna be happy. Um, but portraiture, and we're going to use a grid to kind of work our um, work for scale and proportion. Sorry. All right. So 
I'm not going to fold the canvas paper, but I'm just going to put some lines. Uh, i got to make this darker so you can see it. Yeah, I'll hold it up. So I'm going to divide this visually in eight parts, just like my, yeah, just like the drawing I'm working from. And this one is in half. So super light with your pencil. Uh, you can come back and erase it. Now, we are probably doing this painting in acrylic in class. Uh, those playing from home, uh, you can continue on with watercolor. If I'm not sure how I'm sending acrylic paint home, because it's not like I have sets of it, like watercolor. But if you're really interested in working with the acrylic paint, uh, I can figure something out. I'm not sure how to do it. But I could buy like ice trays maybe and put the paint in it that seal up or um, I don't know cheap uh, cheap what do you call it Tupperware kind of plastic containers because uh, acrylic paint two things you need to know about acrylic paint uh, when it dries it becomes like a solid plastic a solid layer of plastic it dries really quick it's great like that it's very sectional in its groupings of color um, but the problem with it drying really quick is if you leave it around um, you uh, it dries up and so if you leave acrylic paint in your brushes brushes are ruined if you get acrylic paint on your clothes it's pretty solid there uh, unless you have someone amazing that can get paint out like moms or dads. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm lightly drawing in, and these lines, this kind of grid, help me understand where you know this part of the T comes out to. So I'm going to come out maybe a little bit more. Super light. I'll hold this up to the camera in just a second so you can see it. I'm staying light too because I'm going to use this in class. So I'm just trying to get this title in here. And it's all kinds of rounded out. And remember, this is a, a wrapper. Wrapper, wrapper, wrapper. I'm going to wrap. Um, a wrapper. So it's twisted and turned. Um, it's not like an advertisement on a wall or, or on a it, website. It is distorted. So, oh, i got to go further up for my W. So I would copy this over. ba da ba 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 yeah, you can kind of see it there. So I would copy this idea in here. Now, one thing I've got to start thinking about is I'm grouping this stuff in into three three colors. Okay, so this T would be one of my colors. Okay, maybe all of my letters are going to be a single color. I'm going to switch over to this one because we don't have time to do the whole thing here. So. Here's a breakdown of colors in this in this area, and I wish I had a sharpie marker. Give me just a second. Grab this. Oh, perfect. Sort of yes. And let me grab one more thing. I'm coming. I'm coming back. Don't worry. I haven't left you. Now here I come. I'm bringing Marilyn with me. Marilyn? Yes, there's Marilyn. We'll talk about her in a second. So, brush pen. I'll jump back to uh, comments if anybody has them. So the the letters here, this dark area, that's one color. One color. Okay. These light areas here are going to be my second color. Let's, let's do it here. Second color. Because we want three. And then the white area is going to be is going to be my third color. We only want three colors in this. It's going to be pretty simple. So I've got Marilyn here as an example. And here's the breakdown. There, there's more than three colors here, but there's three predominant colors, like the main colors. So we've got this this um, yeah, kind of like a cyan turquoise in the background. We've got her skin color, which is like that pink. And then we've got the yellow. Okay, so those are the three main colors. There's one, two, three in there. and if you had to really get specific, this could be like blue, red, yellow. That's going to be important later. Later, so blue, red, yellow. Don't worry about the the dark red and the eyes. Blue, red, yellow. Okay, 
So we got to break this down into three colors. Simplify, simplify. I don't know why I'm writing that out because um, you're going to see it back. No, that comes out forwards. Google Meet, the letters come out backwards. It's kind of weird. <coughs> so that's that. Let me shift back here for a moment so I can see if anybody's talking to me. Kayla, that's cool. What apps did you say we need to get? Okay. Uh, you can try out a bunch of different ones there, Kayla. i got to switch cameras again. Boom. Okay. But here they are. And they're, you know, if you forget, you know, you don't have anything to write this down right now. This is on our website, Painting, Week 5-6. Okay, there is our our creative color wheel examples, and then down here below the pop art, one for the iPhone is called Abstract U Pop Art Effects, and for the Android it's Pop Art Style. But when I put this in, I just put in Pop Art or Pop Art Filter, and I got a lot of different ones, um, and these are just the two that seemed simple to use and free uh, but there is a lot of free ones so three colors folks three colors uh, let me just jump back here okay I'm just checking every once in a while if there's any um oh, I got gunk on my on my uh, trackpad so what's what's the deal with the colors so there there are my three colors folks so I broke it down to there's there's my magenta my yellow and my cyan magenta yellow cyan that's going to be important in a minute all right here we go so we're going to use triactic colors what triactic is the color relationship t-r-i-a-d-i-c okay and there's the 12-step color wheel we've been working with okay each of these have 12 each of these have 12 12 12 all right so triactic colors are colors in a relationship where they're three apart on the color wheel. So, a moment ago I talked about uh, Marilyn. She had yellow for hair. She had kind of a pink-like or red face and kind of a turquoise blue background. So, it was right in this area. So, three colors and watch, they're separated by three colors. So, here's yellow yellow green green blue green blue okay so one two three apart and then here's from blue we got one two three to the red and then from red we got one two three to the yellow so that's the idea now you don't have to use red yellow blue we could pop out here let's let's go across we'll go green okay so we're we're starting with green one two three orange okay one two three purple okay because this is this one's purple red and this one is really blue purple so it would be purple green orange would be another triactic color so you can try any of these uh, that one right up here um, that I did let's let's see how that one works here's cyan okay cyan one two three and this one is kind of a yellow orange. It's more like yellow there, but we'll we'll go with yellow orange. And one, two, three, and then this is, you know, red purple, or it's also called kind of a magenta. So this is all for next week. Uh, we're gonna finish up the creative color wheel, and we're gonna zoom in on some candy and shoot a picture. Now let's let's say you don't have a phone. All right. You can use the camera on your computer. Let's say the computer camera is broken. Um, no problem. We can... Uh, let me go back to me, because why not? Um, you can just use the candy. Okay. Just kind of zoom in. And one way you could work... I didn't think of this until right now, so um, hold that thought. I need a post-it note and some scissors. And... Those of you that are at home, uh, and, you, and I miss you so, and I don't get to see you, this is what you're missing out on. 
is is Mr. Carlson going, oh, you know what? I should teach you this. Um, and this is just an you know, example of that moment. So you can take a piece of paper and cut it out and put your candy in there. And it kind of naturally blocks out what you don't need. And how's that look? It's not bad. Um, I'm going to eat this when you guys leave. So uh, it naturally crops it out so that you can figure out how big, how big it's going to look on the paper. So it kind of grids it for you. So um, whether you're using the, the fancy phone app or trying to measure it out or just have a piece of paper with a hole in it, all of these things will work just fine. I'm flipping over back to the live stream so I can see if anybody's saying stuff. All right. And before I leave today, I will check my email to make sure um, if anybody can't live chat, uh, we're not leaving them out. So I'm just logging into my email real quick on this computer so I can kind of see if anybody needs help there. Submitted. Kayla, you already did the quiz. Way to go. All right. So let me just make sure I kind of covered everything. All right. So I think I covered all the stuff that's on the quiz. Pretty sure. Uh, you get two shots at it. Uh, and you could go and open this live stream right next to the quizzy and, you know, look back and forth to see uh, the information. Uh, but you got two shots at it. Uh, it's not due until the 30th. I think it's open until the 30th. At that time, it closes up. Uh, the 30th is also where I'm going to kind of close up the grades again. So I kind of look around. I make sure that, you know, if you're missing anything, uh, I'll contact you. And then I I close out those grades just so that we can we can move on. Wow, the candy looks so tiny. I know they're fun sizes. Don't you hate those? I remember like big big chocolate bars when you used to walk around, but you know it's a recession. Money's tight. Okay. Um, so, uh, oh. Speaking of money tight, if uh, remote students are a message to you, if you are running out of supplies that I sent out, or if you never picked up your supplies because there's stuff sitting out in the box there, uh, just let me know and I'll put more stuff out for you. And like I said earlier, I'm going to try to figure out um, a way to get acrylic paint home without it spilling or drying out or any of those things. Um, and then the, the colors that we're using, it's kind of difficult, but... We'll see what we can do. Okay, school calendar. Believe it or not, we're at seven weeks. And grades, I summed up grades. Media Arts Club. We're going to try Media Arts Club for the first time remotely this weekend. And it should be, it should be interesting. Um, I'm going to jump back to the main website. And if you go to the main website, for anybody that's interested in this, uh, just email me. I'll add you to the... Uh, to our list, the Media Arts Club list. This, hold on a second, this should be updated. I got rid of all that stuff. This is just open from the last, last week. That's better. I got rid of the open house stuff because we didn't need it. Okay, all the way down at the bottom here, Media Arts Club. So the first meeting, and I got to put this right on here, or did I? Yeah, that's a lie. Let's change that right now while we're all sitting here. So the first meeting is going to be this weekend, we hope, uh, at 1 o'clock. And you know, it's catching up with me. So that would be, let's see, Wednesday is the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th. Is that the 25th? I think. I'll run through that one more time. Um so what are we going to do there? I'm going to cover that in just a second. I'm flipping through my planner right now just to make sure that we are... Yeah, it's the 25th. All right, so we're going to fix that right now on the website. If you've never used Google, um, Google Sites, it's awesome. You can jump in here, switch things real quick, and then jump back out. All right, publish. There, we fixed it. So if you want to be 
uh, in the Media Arts Club, you're welcome. You just uh, send me a little email in. We'll put you on the list, and then I will send out a Google Meet on Sunday um, just before it. We'll be meeting at 1 o'clock, and I think this week we'll talk about comics. Okay, It just happens to be on the list. Usually when we get together physically uh, as a group, we decide what we want to work with. If you have any ideas that are not on this list, uh, send them to me. Uh, I'll research them. We'll do something. But basically, we're going to get together. Uh, if you guys just want to meet each other on the Google Meet and talk, that's fine. It's really a, quite a social club. But for the most part, these are the things that we've done in the past. Um, comics, animation, uh, game design, which is like a tabletop, cosplay. You know what? Maybe we'll do... It makes more sense to do cosplay. We're going to do cosplay on Sunday. We'll do cosplay and uh, makeup special effects. Uh, let's add that right now. Oh, no, I put it down here. Okay. Makeup, special effects, and cosplay we will have uh, on Sunday at 1 o'clock. And what it, what it's going to be is mostly I'll do some cool demonstrations and um, of things that you can do as far as makeup. What I've done in the past is um, how to make really cool makeup effects cheaply with the things laying around the house so you don't have to go out and buy really expensive makeup but if you're really into that stuff the day after november 1st the day after halloween killer time to get 70 percent off of makeup and costumes and stuff i when my son was little i just went nuts on that day uh, don't tell anybody, but I think one day I actually took off of work just to uh, go and buy all this stuff early in the morning. Oh, there's a bell. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do, folks. At this point in time, I am going to... I, can I come to the meeting in my spider coin costume? For sure. For sure. Um, you know what? That's awesome. Let's do that. Uh, everybody out there, I'm going to send another email out to all of our... Um, media arts people that I have on the list right now and we'll dress up that day because that's just so cool. So I will I will wear a costume as well. Um, I gotta make a note of that really quick. So at this point in time this is where I kinda stop and check does anybody have questions and I gotta add dots to the website and costume on Monday, Sunday. <laughs> Don't mess this up. Okay. Um, yay. Uh, so, any questions? I'm looking at the live chat. I'm checking my email. And I'm going to stick around, folks, for, oh, three more minutes. Okay. And then I'm going to close this live stream down so I can get ready for photo today. Anybody? Anybody? I'm eating my Twix bar. Mm, candy for breakfast at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Caramely goodness. What'd you do in class today? I watched Mr. Carlson eat candy. It's a good time. All right, um, in this last couple minutes, quick um, announcement for my remote students. Remote students, if you need help, if you need clarification, if you're not sure, if you just want to hang out and talk, at 1 o'clock today, I have our usual Google Meet. I have it every Wednesday from 1 until, until no one shows up or until I've answered all the questions. Um, but after 10 minutes... I'll start it at 1 o'clock after 10 minutes if no one shows up. I shut it down because I'm not hanging out with an empty screen, you know. All right. So 30 more seconds. Check an email. Anybody? All right. I think I'm going to close this one out. Everybody else, we'll see you on the flip side. If you do have any questions, email me. Okay. Take care. Boop.